Welcome to a macro view where we take an in-depth look at Rule 20 macros and break them down in an attempt to make you a better macro maker. Thanks for joining me. My name is Jim. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about the advantages of a DM using macros. Um, as a DM, I use um, all of the macros that you can see up here. If you click on a character, Aru, all of these macros up on the top, these buttons are macros that I've created, and I refer to them as, I guess, global, in that they all, all the characters use the same macro. So I'm able to create a macro, and then all the players see it, and so they don't have to have that same individual macro. I only have to create it once. When I edit it, they get all the changes and everything. So... Um, these are the ones we use. We use a critical and fumble chart uh, as opposed to the crit and fumble rules. Uh, we have a direction chart. just gives you a random direction. If you come over here, it's west, right? Like if your weapon is thrown out of your hand in a general direction or, uh, or a random direction, you can click direction and it'll give you one of nine different directions or eight different directions, north, northeast, west, and south, and northeast, northwest, etc. Um, healing potion. Um, will there be a separate video on healing potion? Um, we use the house rule that uh, healing potions do maximum damage, and so you can pick regular, great, or superior. Um, submit, and it's a healing potion. Create a potion does 20 healing. Um, when I do that video, I will show you how to do both the rolls and the maximum values. Initiative, if the tracker's open, let me remove. So you can click on the character. So Aru, he clicks initiative, puts him on the, on the initiative order. Now, one of the greatest things that this allows you to do is that if someone is gone for some reason for a night, so, so we'll run with four people, we won't run with three or less, um, and then one of the other players has to play the person that's missing. And so if they're gone, um, and let's say Skiki is playing Aru, he can click on Aru and run any of these things for Aru. So he can do a skill check for Aru, he can do a saving throw for Aru, he can do initiative for Aru. And so it allows another person to roll the same role for someone else. And so that's one of the biggest advantages. So um, basically what we, what we do is, oh, we also have uh, saving throw, which is, you know, any of these constitutions. Saving throw Aru, constitution. So we've got skill check. Now we have we have all the normal skill checks and we have sanity, which um, basically in called another AP have um, Ruidium poisoning. And so what I've done is I've com combined Ruidium poisoning along with sanity in that Ruidium causes insanity. So um, they have to do sanity checks, and they start with 20 points, and they go down. And if they get, you know, they hit 15, they have temporary insanity, etc. So that they have that skill check. And one of the things that a couple we use from 4E in particular is I like the streetwise skill in, in, in determining values. And streetwise skill uses, I think, intelligence and... I think I think intelligence and a new ability that I created called background bonus. Um, and, and if somebody's like a thief or uh, has, a, has a lifetime of stealing things and, and working with the black market and understanding values, they, they get a bonus. So, so we have a thief in our group um, whose background is a thief and um, he gets a plus five bonus um, because of his background on Streetwise. And then you get to add your arcana for magical items, so if you're a magic user, you have a better chance of knowing the value of, and that's street price. So um, again, that'll be a separate video. You could, you know, you don't have to use it, obviously. Um, sanity and streetwise, we add, but you don't have to. And then if you run, you know, whatever, um, you know, persuasion. So having the ability to run it for someone else is great. So the way you do this is you go to collections, and I apologize, I have so many, I have tons of um, supplementals loaded and so um, 
it takes me a while to find the one I'm looking for, but let's say for instance, saving throw. So this is the macro that I created for saving throw. And we'll go over that in a separate video it's itself, but I'm just showing you as a DM. So I create saving throw, put the macro on there. I check show as token action. So when they click it, it'll show up on the top and then I make it visible to all players. And so that allows me to create one single macro that all of the players use. And so they don't have to create that macro five times for themselves. And then if something changes or I modify the macro, they don't have to go back and change it. They can just use the global macro that I've already created. Plus I control those and so I can modify it. And then they just, when next time they log in, they, they get the changes that are uploaded. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Um, as a DM, it's a great, uh, great option. Um, and hopefully you can use it in the future. Um, hope you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.